order of business. The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 14747 in the name of Tom Arthur on St Andrew's Day 2018, make someone's day. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Tom Arthur to open the debate. Mr Arthur, please. Thank you, presiding officer. It's my great pleasure and privilege to lead this year's St Andrew's Day debate in our national parliament. I would like to thank all those from across the chamber who supported my motion and to thank the Minister Ben McPherson for his engagement with members ahead of this debate and providing information on how the Scottish Government is supporting the celebration of St Andrew's Day across Scotland. Presiding officer, today marks the 10th St Andrew's Day debate we have had since the Parliament reconvened in 1999. However, the first time we debated our National Day was in March 2004, and a members' debate secured by the late Donald Gorey. As we approach the 20th anniversary of devolution, it is perhaps revealing of the Parliament's early years, but it took almost until the second year of the second session to recognise St Andrew's Day in a parliamentary debate. Donald Gorey was, of course, an independent-minded MSP who famously advised his Liberal Democrat colleagues to never say never to an independence referendum ahead of the 2007 elections. I'm sure my colleagues are grateful his colleagues didn't take his advice. Perhaps, therefore, it is an interesting coincidence of history that the first St Andrews debate on or, around, on or around the day itself was led by Dennis Canavan, some eight months after Mr Gorry's. Presiding officer, I think it is fair to say that no single Scottish politician of recent times has done as much as Dennis Canavan to promote participation in St Andrews Day. His most enduring legacy in this area is, of course, the St Andrews Day Bank Holiday Scotland Act 2007. However, he has also been a driving force in the St Andrews Day Campaign Committee and is now Secretary to the Cross Party Group on St Andrews Day, which, of which I am honoured to be convener. This is a group which rightly commands support from across the Chamber and I would encourage members to engage with the group over the coming 12 months ahead of St Andrews Day 2019. Presiding Officer, I also wish to recognise the contribution of both the Scottish Government and other colleagues who have secured St Andrews Day debates over recent years. The record holder, if that is the appropriate term, is of course your colleague Linda Fabiani, who as a government minister led debates in 2007 and in 2008, a day almost exactly 10 years ago in which there was also a debate on fishery negotiations with Europe. Some things never change. More recently, debates have been secured and led by Kevin Stewart, Annabel Ewing, Bruce Crawford and Michael Russell. These debates have generally been consensual and serve to remind us that we have more in common than that which divides us. They also serve as an opportunity to reaffirm our inclusive sense of Scottish identity. In a previous debate, it was you yourself, presiding officer, who framed it succinctly in stating that St Andrew's Day serves as a symbolic reminder that we are the Scottish people, whether or not we are born here. It is that inclusive spirit which is carried into this year's celebrations. Presiding Officer, the theme of St Andrew's Day 2018 is to make someone's day. This is a message that is not only relevant, but also necessary. This year, our National Day falls at the end of a month in which children were tear gassed by the world's only superpower and our fellow EU citizens were described as queue jumpers. It falls in a year in which, in the man-made tragedy of Yemen, the largest documented outbreak of cholera in history continues. And it falls at a time of unprecedented wildfires, floods and extreme weather, which affirm we are on the brink of climate catastrophe. And in an era of such darkening skies, a sense of fatalism and despair can become overpowering, which is eagerly exploited by those wishing to fan the flames of hate and intolerance. Therefore, it is at such times that simple acts of kindness, decency and humanity become essential. Every interaction we have with another human being is a small pebble dropped into the pool of our collective experience. We do not know how far the ripples will travel, but we each define in our own actions whether we send them with goodwill or malice intent. Communities, societies, and nations are ultimately the sum of a complex web of relationships between individuals. It is the strength of each of these innumerable connecting threads 
that determines the health of the whole. By taking time to think of others, to make someone's day, we can each generate sparks of light that together will illuminate the darkened, sky, darkened skies we currently face. In that spirit, I am very much looking forward to attending Barhead Menshed's fifth birthday party tomorrow and joining Lochwinnock Elderly Forum for the Andrew St Andrews Lunch, two groups who work to make someone's day all year long. Presiding officer, this weekend we will once again celebrate Small Business Saturday and I know I'm not the only member who will be sampling the produce of many of our small and independent traders as I visit Christmas fairs across my own constituency of Renfrewshire South. And this year's Small Business Saturday is particularly special as for the first time we will also be celebrating St Andrew's Fair Saturday. The Fair Saturday movement originates from Bilbao in the Basque country of northern Spain. It started in 2015 as a positive cultural response to the excessive consumerism of Black Friday. Since then it has grown year on year with the last year seeing events taking place in 114 cities with over 140,000 artists and members of the public participating. These events generated almost 200,000 euros for local social causes. This year, I'm sure we will see further increases in participation. And I look forward to learning how communities across Scotland will embrace, will embrace the Fair Saturday movement. I also look forward to seeing how these events complement many of our more established St Andrew's Day events such as a work led by Bemis Scotland to celebrate our diversity, the famous St Andrew's Conga pioneered by Glasgow, the caring city, and of course, the St Andrew's Day debating tournament grand final taking place in this very chamber. Presiding officer, St Andrew's Day offers a chance for all Scots, new and old, near and far, to come together and celebrate our unique contribution to the world and to recommit ourselves to our values of fairness, equality, and compassion. Some cynics may level a charge of Scottish exceptionalism. So in concluding, let me respond with this. As individuals, as communities, as a nation, our actions follow from our values and only we can define our values. So this St Andrew's Day, let us recommit to the values that we choose and in doing so, make someone's day. Thank you very much. I call Gillian Martin to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Ms Martin, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to thank Tom Martha for bringing this debate to the Chamber, highlighting St Andrew's Day. And I've always thought that we need to do more at home to celebrate national, uh, Scotland's National Day. Because, of course, acro across the world, global Scots probably do more, actually, than we do at home to celebrate the, uh, St Andrew's Day and, and as I've been an expat on a number of occasions myself I can understand that because you do miss home and I think you, you, you do make the most of the days like this to, to celebrate your Scottishness. But certainly friends and family who, that I know that have, have lived and worked around the world have been involved in, in organising and enjoying St Andrew's Day balls and events. Friends of mine who lived for a few years in Baku in Azerbaijan enjoyed many events like this and I really much enjoyed looking at their photographs around this. And my own aunt and uncle were heavily involved in running the Singapore St Andrews Society Ball every year and uh, which looked a huge affair with pipers dancing and everyone in ball gowns and national dress. Yet when we were at home maybe not so much and I, w I wonder why that is. Perhaps if every local authority decided to implement the local holiday as, as voted on in this place in 2006 we might stand a better chance of St Andrews Day becoming the special day that it should be as it is in other countries. And of course there are exceptions though. My own party is a St Andrews Day dinner hosted by Independence Magazine the other week and here in Edinburgh the day marks the start of the Winter Festival and Visit Scotland has a list of amazing events happening throughout Scotland to celebrate St Andrew's Day. Yes I will. Alison Allen. I thank the member for giving way on the point that she rightly makes about the importance of local authorities being involved. Does she also agree it would be helpful if all local authorities agreed to take the same day to celebrate because not all do. Julian Martin. Absolutely. If we, if, we, if we want the impact of St Andrew's Day to be a real festival which I think would be a terrific idea, then I think the coordination would be absolutely key to that. 
So as, as Tom Arthur has mentioned, the theme of St Andrew's Day is make someone's day, and I think that's a wonderful idea for the reasons that Tom Arthur has said. The smallest acts of kindness um, can have a huge impact on brightening someone's day, making someone feel better, the kind of pay it forward idea, which I, I, I really do love. Um, it's, well, my only regret about the, the toll, the toll on, the, on the bridge being stopped is that we used to pay it forward by paying the fare, the, the tariff of the car behind us for two reasons, because it was a nice thing to do, but also used to freak people out. But anyway, <laughs> um, I've, just, I've, I've, I've tried to deliver a, an act of uh, kindness by offering to close my office tomorrow so that my staff can have a day off in St Andrew's Day tomorrow. And I say try, they, they're, they're actually quite resistant. They're a hard-working bunch who really take their responsibilities very seriously, like all constituency staff. I think that I might actually have to make my offer a demand to actually get them to commit to take that day off. Um, never like a gift horse in the mouth, guys. Please just take the day off. In the spirit of Tom Arthur's motion, I will be collecting food for the Inverary Food Bank at the local Tesco, as I do every year. It is an act of kindness and support that every one of the volunteers, though, wishes that we didn't have to do. Um, but it does, every year, remind me of a particular, I'd say, a national trait that we can celebrate as well, and that is the generosity and fair-mindedness of Scots, and that's always in evidence in the donations that we get. I want to also pay tribute to the efforts of the 10 schools in my constituency who've come together to form a choir linking St Andrew's Day um, with the Fair Saturday um, that Tom Arthur has mentioned. They are performing a concert whose proceeds will go to the local St Andrew's School. Now St Andrew's School, as many here will know, is a unique special school whose pupils range from 3 to 18 that have a range of barriers to learning. Um, and I, the school whose emblem is actually that obviously of our national flag. Right appropriately, it's on the, cu the, the cusp of a very big change, moving from their present location to be part of the new Inverurie community campus. Um, St Andrew's School will be housed in the new campus, but will retain its singular identity and continue to provide the specialist environment and learning for all its pupils. It's testament to the high regard that the school has in the local community, whose pupils don't just come from Inverurie, they come as far as New Deer and Tariff that the schools have chosen to make St Andrew's Schools Day. I wish them all well, and I wish you all a happy St Andrew's Day when it comes. Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. Call Rachel Hamilton, followed by Mark Griffin, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank Tom Arthur for bringing this debate to the Chamber today and delighted to have the opportunity to participate. May congratulate um, Gillian Martin and Tom Arthur on their very considered speeches. The St Andrews is a fantastic opportunity to show off to the world what Scotland does best, whether it's our warm hospitality, rich cu culture and history. There are many events planned up and down the country to celebrate the day. And I welcome the initiative Fair Saturday, which was taken, as Tom Arthur said, as an idea from the British Council meeting in Bilbao in 2014. And Fair Saturday aims to mobilise people through social empathy rather than through commercialism, which is something that many of my constituents talk about, um, Black Friday um, being something that isn't very supportive to uh, local high streets and communities. And this ties into making somebody's day, as we've all spoken about. I feel that on Fair Saturday, and beyond into the Christmas period, it is only right that we take a moment to see through uh, commercialism and embrace the true meaning of uh, celebration and Christmas, which is social inclusivity and good cheer. Closer to home in my own constituency, some 200 pupils from Hoyk, Denham and Newcastleton primary schools will be putting on their dancing shoes for a lively night of Cayley dancing. And the event, which is held annually, is organised by local branches of the Royal Scottish Country Dancing Society. Uh, they, have, they have certainly been putting the pupils through their paces in the run-up to the, this event with six weeks of practice. So watch this space. Perhaps there'll be some competition on Strictly, presiding officer. <laughs> I would like to thank all of those who organised the Cayley and Morrisons for donating the juice and the snacks. And these sorts of events are fantastic at pulling t our communities together and offering a chance for people to socialise and just have some fun for an evening. I believe that these events strike a chord with the campaign associated um, with St Andrew's Day celebrations. And if you're going to do anything on social media, um, please hashtag make someone's day. The campaign encourages people to share just small mm. acts of kindness. And in particular, um, I am of the opinion that many of the members across this chamber are that we should really be striving to do this every day, whether it's popping in. Um, passed to visit an elderly neighbour for a chat or volunteering for a local charity, the message from the campaign 
is a reminder that we should look out for one another, particularly as we are entering the darkest and coldest part of the winter. We should look out especially for our elderly neighbours. In my rural constituency, social isolation is a, a key problem, and with an ageing population, um, that is only just going to grow. And elderly people often can't travel around so easily, and they may, might not see anybody for months um, except or on each day except for the local postman. And during these cold winter months, I would urge everybody to make sure that they check on their elderly neighbours and relatives at this time, even if it is just to say hello. And just to um, con continue with that theme of loneliness, um, it, it affects people's mental and physical health too, and social isolation, as I've said in um, previous um, contributions in this chamber, it costs the National Health Service as much as £12,000 um, per affected person. It can be a significant a risk factor for early death of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And whilst the Scottish Government is taking steps to reduce social isolation, a lot more can be done. And I think these campaigns and the letter that I re received from Ben McPherson can go in some way to helping the situation and hopefully we all, all get involved. In closing, Presiding Officer, I want to wish everyone a happy St Andrew's Day and uh, to take away an important message that small acts of kindness really can make somebody's day. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call... Mark Griffin to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Mr Griffin, please. Thank you, President Officer. Today's debate uh, celebrates the day of our patron St Andrew and of course gives us the chance to celebrate our Scottish heritage. As Tom Arthur's motion says, tomorrow is an opportunity for people in Scotland across all faiths, cultures and origins to, ma to mark the contribution of Scotland at home and across the globe. And I'm thankful for his action in making sure we have this important to um, debate today. Those, those of here uh, will also know that this debate complements the establishment of a new cross-party group charged with promoting the celebration of St Andrew's Day. And of course, St Andrew is the national saint of countries including um, Bulgaria, Greece, Romania, Russia, Cyprus and Barbados. And I hope they too are gearing up for their own celebrations. He's also the patron saint of fishermen, fishmongers and rope makers, which is so very uh, appropriate to Scotland given our seafaring heritage and perhaps noteworthy given recent vigorous debates surrounding the common fisheries policy. But St Andrew's creden credentials as a saint of workers don't stop there. He's also the saint of textile workers, miners, butchers and farm workers. Perhaps then uh, it's apt that for some of our public sector workers, uh, at least tomorrow, is a bank holiday in Scotland. Pursued by Dennis Canavan, we know legally the law allows someone to choose not to make payment on St Andrew's Day, a, a boon for small business and anyone budgeting ahead of Christmas. It is a good opportunity, um, as ever, for workers across Scotland to fill um, the theme, make someone's day. I, I hope, however, it's a, it's a starting point for our work on the cross-party group to encourage more organisations and businesses to take the day so that the people of Scotland will have the opportunity to take a rest and celebrate their national identity, their cultural diversity and their membership of the international community. And the impetus um, behind that is the same um, that is at the heart of UK Labour's plan for four new bank holidays on the patient saint days of the United Kingdom to celebrate and share in our national cultures and strengthen the bonds across these isles. Before I finish up, President Officer, the motion says this year our celebration of Scotland's art and culture is for the first time being coordinated through Fair Saturday from Bowmore and North Berwick and Stromness um, to St Andrews where people are celebrating to meet, um, meeting to celebrate the, the National Day. Um, unfortunately for re uh, residents in my own region, the, the only event um, being held as part of Fair Saturday is in Falkirk, so clearly a bit of work for me over the next year to go back to the region and encourage more organisations, community groups and artists from central Scotland to get involved or, or at least um, signed up uh, for 2019. Um, but for tomorrow, I hope that all Scots, born and bred, new or just simply visiting, get to enjoy the day, rest and immerse themselves the, the day's history and their heritage. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Peter Chapman. Ms McGuire, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Our National Day is a wonderful opportunity to promote Scotland as an inclusive and outward nation and also to reaffirm to ourselves the very things that define our values as a nation. I'd like to thank my friend and colleague Tom Arthur for securing this debate and giving us all the opportunity to welcome the Andrews annual St Andrew's Day celebrations. As has been mentioned by colleagues, this year's St Andrew's Day theme is Make Someone's Day imploring us to take a moment of time to perform a small act of kindness, perhaps to look in on an old friend, to spend a bit of time with a neighbour, or to support local volunteering that goes on in all of our constituencies. The cup of kindness is something that I'm proud to say overflows in abundance in my Ayrshire constituency, Cunningham South. In Stevenson, for example, the Henry family at Townhead Cafe will once again be providing Christmas dinner absolutely free of charge for any vulnerable, elderly or lonely people in the three towns and co-winning. And not a week goes by that our local newspapers don't carry stories of fundraising efforts for various worthy local charities. Um, if Chamber will indulge me, I'd like to mention some of the, the, the local folk that have been doing good things. For example, Pauline Tremble is an Irvine-based artist who provided a series of paintings to raise funds for Whiteley's retreat in Ayr. Ellie Kennedy from Irvine raised an amazing £700 for the Beatson and for the Little Princess charity, which provides wigs to children who are um, have going through cancer treatment. The co-winning ambulance depot raised £1,900 for the brain tumour charity by putting on an amazing fun day that many of the community took part in. And Birchie Hill Scouts um, managed to raise £300 for guide dogs for the blind. The new Kindness Rocks campaign is something that is being done by Irvine's Reverend Neil Urquhart and Father Willie Boyd. And they're coming together to further promote the message of kindness. They're working in association with North Ayrshire Kindness Innovation Network and the two Shoes Brothers, as they're known, give them a wee search on YouTube and you'll, you'll see their song and dance activities, are recording a song and promoting a video to promote kindness at home, in the workplace and across our communities on the run up to Christmas across the constituency. As has been mentioned, this year we'll also see the launch of St Andrew's Fair Saturday, part of the global celebration of Fair Saturday to provide a celebration of arts and culture and an opportunity for people of all faiths, beliefs, cultures and ethnic origins, as well as Scots internationally to mark the contribution of Scotland at home and across the globe. The theme of kindness is again prevalent with contributors asked to support a social cause and to promote the wider celebration of St Andrew's Day through their work. This Saturday, I'm lucky to be joining the very hardworking staff of Tesco and Irvine on their annual food bank collection. Now, St Andrew, of course, has an international profile, being not just the patron saint of Scotland, but also of Greece, Russia, Romania and Ukraine. So it's appropriate that we reaffirm Scotland's commitment as an open, welcoming and inclusive nation. Amidst the chaotic maelstrom of Brexit and what seems to be a, a terrible surge in, in racism and fascism. As Scots, we should continue to celebrate and aspire to embody our shared global values in respecting human dignity and human rights, freedom, democracy, equality and the rule of law. I'll just finish by wishing everyone a very happy St Andrew's Day, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. I'll call Peter Chapman to be followed by George Adam. Mr Adam will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Chapman, please. I thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I am pleased, uh, like everyone else, to speak in today's debate, which celebrates Scottish culture, ethnic or origin, heritage and inclusiveness. And I am also delighted that this year's theme is Make Someone's Day. Across this chamber, we have heard stories from every member's different background and experience. And I would like to share some of my Doric culture with a poem by uh, uh, Mr George Dunbar. And this is a poem about a party held on St Andrew's night and it's, it's amazing the huge amount of food and drink that was consumed on the night and hopefully it'll make at least some of your day. 
I've always said that there's some great poems written in the Doric. Some, that the, you know, the best poems written in the Doric will stand in comparison with anything written in the English language. Unfortunately, this is not one of them. But um, the reason I'm using it today is because it is focused on St. Andrew's Night. So there might be another occasion when I can actually give you some of the real quality stuff written in Doric. And mostly when I'm doing this, I, I do it from memory. I, I learn the poem, but unfortunately, I haven't had time to learn this poem. But it is, it's entitled St. Andrew's Night. When ball St. Andrew's Night come round, a core forgathered at the tune, to hear rant or lilt a tune, and team a jovial durum. They sup at kale and guid kale bros, Wilt needs nae praise in rhyme or prose, till faces loud like reedest rose, or came o cocalorum. Comes cocaliki, guidly fairin, and huddies sweet and collar herin, there was a nuch for awe and sparin, as face their prapples storem. Sign come the haggis, het and reekin, its spicy, spicy goff, elk nose was seekin, and nae a tongue had room for speakin, till nippy swack did score him. The rosen breast of some fat nout that aft mong juicy gas did rout, the deal of e'en of them would flout, but scoffed what was afore him. Now sheep's heed round the table creeps, along we bristled tatties, neeps, and whang away their stuff in heaps, some winner where they'd store him. We pheasant uh, here and Patrick there, stout mealy puddings and our aunt to spare, you would have thought some had naysayer, Say hearty, they did lower him. Neast rats plum doff and apple tart, and trumlin' tarn so sweetly sert, got elk a chill pray to be spared to form the happy quorum. Some knew mid why their teeth to pike, some crack at nelts and just sick like, while tongues were buzzing like a bike, we nothing knew to bore him. We sang and used the oars sped by, while pleasure beamed in elky eye, and care good wandering we a sigh, a yont all cairn gorum. A doch and doris noon, neen made out, was quaffed afore they done it out, while shone the means sharp nibbit snoot, some swore they saw a score him. And so we sang and heard some cheer, we all the acquaintance I said ear, they held St. Andrew's neck this year as others did afore them. And that's it, the folks. Um, I hope some of you, at least some of you, enjoyed it, and, and, and I hope some of you could understand it as well. I need little encouragement to, to speak about a Doric, and I rarely do an after dinner speech without doing a poem or a bothy ballad. But just in closing, Deputy President Over, it is great to see such vibrant and varying Scottish culture in the chamber today. While this de debate has been a great opportunity to express and display a wide variety of culture and experiences of St. Andrew's Day, I also want to touch on a, another part of our shared culture. And part of our shared culture, ladies and gentlemen, is our flag. The salt there is the flag of Scotland. And ahead of St. Andrew's Day tomorrow, I think it is important to get behind the Everyone's Flag campaign. It is not a flag belonging to one political party, one belief, or to push one agenda, or political persuasion. Presiding officer, it is everyone's flag. I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering, Mr. Chapman, what the official report made of that. So I hope you've got it. Got it written out. I hope you've got an English translation for the bits. I followed bits of it, um, and <laughs> it's wonderful to hear your Doric and your accent. Um, I now call George Adam, then close, and then to the minister. Thank you, presiding officer. I'm loving this debate. I'm loving the fact that we're all defining our very idea of our nation and the Scottishness of ourselves. And I'd like to thank my friend and colleague, Tom Arthur, for bringing this debate to the chamber. I've been involved in this, de this debate on numerous times in the past. And one of the things I always manage to do is how, what we're actually doing in Renfrewshire, what we're doing in Paisley with regards to St Andrew's Day. Because in Paisley, it's part of the winter events uh, that we have, which start with the uh, uh, fire, the fantastic fireworks display, going on to the Christmas lights switching on, and then St Andrew's Day currently, 
We have Paisley First, which is the business improvement district, actually having a winter festival in the town centre now. There is a massive big wheel right next to Paisley uh, Cross that has uh, all the lights on and everything else. Uh, the London Eye has nothing on this big wheel in Paisley Cross. It's an incredible uh, kind of event. And uh, if we're going to be spending any time over this period, probably it will be there with the family. But for us, it's ensuring the legacy of the Paisley 2021 year of culture. And as Mark Griffin's already stated, St Andrew is the patron saint of textile workers. And if a town like Paisley cannot celebrate our uh, patron saint, you know, then with our history in textiles, then there's absolutely no one else that can do it. But it's only right that Scotland's Parliament recognises our patron saint, because near the day that we celebrate St Andrew, over the years I've looked at the Irish and the, the idea of St Patrick's Day with some envy, and I've looked at them as all over the world has celebrated their patron saint's day. And I, for us, I see it can be a missed opportunity to promote and tell the world what we are all about. And I know for a fact that the Scottish Government have been doing a lot of work on this, but I think there's still, we can still use these events in these days to promote ourselves some more because the Scottish diaspora is equal, if not larger, than the Irish one. And St Andrew's Day can be another example of how we celebrate and promote all things special about Scotland. And on Friday, my own office will be taking the day off. So if I'm going to make anyone happy and make anyone's day, I've already done it with my members of staff because they've got a one day off to actually the, to be able to rest up after uh, uh, supporting and helping the good people of Paisley over the, the past year. But I particularly like the theme of this year's St Andrew's Day celebration. The idea of using our Patron Saints Day as a means to make someone's day is a brilliant way to celebrate it. It shows that we continue to believe in our people and our communities. And as I've already said, my own staff will have that day off and uh, they promise to have a good day with that as well. But the whole point of the campaign is for us to make people's life that wee bit better. Whether that is uh, ensuring our neighbours are okay or visiting family and friends you haven't seen in a while. If everyone does one small thing, then together we can make a huge difference. Surely that is a fitting tribute to St Andrew. And as I previously says, it shows that our, what our priorities are. And as Paisley's MSP, my priorities have always been to the people I represent. It's always been about people that I, that I try to make their lives better. And as an individual, my family are extremely important to me as well. But sometimes my daughter, Jessica, will complain that I sometimes get the two mixed up in my priorities. And I sometimes maybe spend more time helping the people of Paisley than dealing with my family and their grandchildren. So perhaps for me, it might be a good day for me to make that uh, time special to actually go and visit some of my family and friends and spend time with them. Because in closing, presiding officer, I would like to thank Tom Arthur again for bringing this debate to the chamber. It's my belief that days like this are the ones that we can celebrate Scotland in its entirety. And this debate has shown that's exactly what we have done. Who we are and what we've done and where we're going, that for me is the importance of days like today or tomorrow. And I look forward to future years and to see how we can further promote this St Andrew's Day, how we can enjoy Scotland together and how we can promote this to the world and tell everyone who exactly Scotland is. Thank you. And I call on Ben McPherson to close for the Government Minister. Thank you, President Officer. And thank you so much to Tom Arthur for bringing today's debate and to all members who've contributed for such thoughtful, passionate and enthusiastic speeches. And it's great to be in the chamber with you all today as part of this important debate. The Scottish Government, presiding officer, is very proud to support our winter festivals with over half a million pounds because our winter festivals boost Scotland's tourism and events sectors. However, as we have already heard today, they are certainly not all about finance. In fact, quite the opposite. From the unifying spirit of Hogmanay to the remarkable poetry of Robert Burns and others, from the global solidarity of Auld Lang Syne to celebrating Scotland's modern multicultural identity, our winter festivals are positively and purposefully entangled and entwined with boosting Scotland's international profile, enhancing our collective confidence, and affirming and promoting our values of fairness, kindness, inclusivity, and empowerment. Building on this, on the 1st of November, I was delighted to launch 
the Scottish Government-led campaign to showcase Scotland's biggest ever celebration of St Andrew's Day. And on Friday tomorrow, the 30th of November, Scotland is inviting people from near and far to join in the celebration of Scotland's National Day through coordinated partner activity and national and local events right across the country. And what's particularly exciting this year, as others have mentioned, is that for the first time, the celebration of Scotland's National Day is linked to the global Fair Saturday Initiative. Indeed, I understand we are the first Northern European country to join the Fair Saturday Initiative, the second in Europe after founding country Spain, and the first country as a whole to commit to the initiative. This year, we have up to 100 events celebrating St Andrew's Day between the 30th of November and the 3rd of December, which is four times the amount of last year, and uh, reaches into areas across the country, including uh, key island communities with events in Skye and the Western Isles. Back to the Fair Saturday Initiative, which is part of that, was founded, uh, it was founded by Jordi Albareta, who's a really inspiring person, uh, to promote and deliver positive social change. And reflecting the progressive and compassionate spirit of Fair Saturday, the common thread that connects all of Scotland's St Andrew's Day celebrations this year is a focus on marking our National Day by encouraging Scots far and wide to support others, by engaging in small acts of kindness to make someone's day. As others have said, whether it's helping a relative, friend, neighbour or stranger, or showing compassion where it's needed, whether it's contributing to a local cause or an international charity, or inviting friends and partners to mark the occasion together. Throughout Scotland this year, we're encouraging ourselves and each other to celebrate our National Day by looking outwards and positively engaging in kindness. The aim of all of this is not only to make a difference, but also to make Scotland's St Andrew's Day celebration something quite unique. By keeping local communities at the very heart of the celebrations, by reflecting our values and global reputation for fairness, by expressing the importance we place on the vital and, integ and integral role of our young people in our society, by celebrating the diversity of what modern Scotland is all about, and by working to strengthen the inclusive nature of the modern Scottish identity. This year, our St Andrew's Day celebrations will be the biggest yet, with so many different initiatives taking place, from a mass conga of school children to torchlight processions to multicultural events demonstrating the positive plurality of Scotland's sense of national and global citizenship. The multicultural celebration of Scotland's winter festivals delivered by Bemis Scotland has gone from strength to strength. And this year I'm delighted that groups including the Polish Cultural Festival Association, Interfaith Association, and St Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh, the Nepalese Himalayan Association Scotland in Aberdeen, the Ethnic Minority Forum in East Dumbartonshire, and the Glad Cafe in Glasgow are all celebrating St Andrew's Day alongside their own unique heritage, faith, and traditions. Presiding officer, as I said, at the beginning of my remarks. As Scotland marks our National Day this week, we do so looking outward, not inward. In these times of flux and challenge, it's important to emphasize, as others have in the chamber, that Scotland's national identity is set within our internationalist ethos and traditions. Our sense of ourselves as Scots is, and long has been, bound up and intertwined with a long-held wider identity as a progressive European and global partner and with our broad commitment to global citizenship. As it says in Tom Arthur's motion, this year, whether it's on St Andrew's Day tomorrow or on St Fair Saturday, coupled with commitments to, fair business, uh, to small business Saturday, Tomorrow and on Saturday, we have the opportunity for people of, in Scotland of all faiths, beliefs, cultures and ethnic origins, and Scots internationally, to mark the contribution of Scotland at home 
and across the globe. Whatever you are doing to members and everyone across Scotland, have a very happy St Andrew's Day. Thank you for being part of this wider commitment to make someone's day. Because together, through kindness, community and fairness, we can make an important difference and demonstrate to the world, ourselves and each other, the very best of what it means to be Scottish. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.